Hey everybody, my name is Alex McGregor. I'm an Olympus photographer and I've been working with the camera that I'm shooting on right now, the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. I've used it for a few months now for all types of photography, weddings, portraits, sports, all kinds of things. And my personal favorite type of photography is done at night. It's astrophotography. So I decided it was time to really push this camera and test out the different features, the different functions, and see how to get the very best performance of this micro four thirds camera at night. Can it compete with the big full frame boys? Let's find out. So during this video, I'll be sharing a lot of my favorite photos, but if you want to see more, you can follow me right here on Instagram. I post a lot more frequently there and you can see kind of a little more behind the scenes into what makes these images. So in order to find out what the best settings for this camera is, I'm testing single exposures, tracked exposures, and also using the high resolution modes, both handheld and tripod, because these are some of the functions in this camera that really do set it apart from a lot of the other major manufacturers out there. For all the photos in this test, I use the same lens I'm shooting on. It's the Mzuiko 17mm 1.2 Pro. This is a sharp little prime lens with a 35mm full frame equivalent. Some other good options if you are using an Olympus camera would be the 12 millimeter F2 and also the eight millimeter fisheye with that 1.8 aperture can capture a ton of light at that wide angle. And I've also used the seven to 14 F2.8. It's a little darker with that 2.8, but the images you see right here were made with that lens. So it is definitely a very capable little lens. So first I wanna talk about camera settings. You really have to think of shooting Astro in a similar way that you would think of as shooting sports. In sports, you know if you're gonna freeze the action of like a receiver catching a football, you need a really fast shutter speed to freeze that motion and not have any blur. While it might not seem like it, when we're taking photos of the stars, we also have to be worried about freezing the action. In this photo I'm showing you right now, you can see what happens if you leave your camera exposed for 110 seconds. You see all those little stars are streaky? While everything does seem calm and peaceful at night, the stars are actually moving from our perspective. As we spin through the solar system, those stars do move in even a 30 second exposure is long enough to show that motion blur. So there's a few ways for figuring out how to freeze those stars. There's the tried and true rule of 500, which is 500 divided by your focal length, divided by your crock factor. And if you wanna see more details on how the rule of 500 works or how the rule of NPF, which is what I prefer to use works, click on this video right here and I break that all down for you. But with using all of these rules together, I figured out that a pretty good exposure time for this camera with a 17 millimeter lens is about 13 seconds. So for all my untracked images, I had it set to 13 seconds. And for the first series of images, I wanted to go somewhere that was fairly realistic for most of us because due to light pollution, we can't really get to perfectly dark skies. So I went to this little hilltop overlooking the town of Frisco, Colorado to capture these images. Because of the town lights, I couldn't shoot super bright and super wide open. So I actually stopped down the lens to F2.8 and was shooting at ISO 3200. I started off shooting in regular resolution mode because I wanted to see how much of a difference stacking single exposures made. To do this, I attached this intervalometer from Pixel Pro to the camera and shot 20 images in a row at 13 seconds. In this image I'm showing you, you can see that the single exposures are on the right side and the stacked exposures are on the left. On a small screen, it might be hard to tell the difference, but if you zoom in or would like to print these images, you will definitely notice the difference between the two. For one, the noise on the stacked image is greatly reduced. You can see it a bit more in the detail in the dust clouds of the Milky Way. And if you include a foreground and use a program like Sequitur or Starry Landscape Stacker, you can have this program align the stars and freeze the ground for you. So you get a really low noise image for both the sky and the foreground. 
Doing this will help out a ton if you want to print your images or display them on a large screen, you will really see the difference from stacking. And if you wanna see more about how that stacking process works, I have this video right here. So stacking applies to pretty much every camera manufacturer, but let's get more Olympus specific with this next test. Now I'm going to test out the difference between the regular exposure, the handheld high resolution exposure, and a tripod high resolution exposure. In this image you're looking at now, you can see the comparison between the three different settings. In the tripod high res mode, your camera shifts your sensor eight times in increments of one micron, capturing one exposure per adjustment. These images are then combined automatically to create an 80 megapixel photograph. In the handheld high res mode, the sensor based image stabilization is kind of working double time and realigning your sensor based off of the movement between each exposure. So the camera actually analyzes the amount of movement between the pictures and uses that information to align your images and stacks them for you. And it will also clone out any blurred areas of your photo. So let's first compare the standard 20 megapixel photo against the handheld high resolution image. I went away from light pollution for this shot. These were both shot at f1.2, ISO 6400, and 13 seconds. In this image, on the left side is the high resolution, and on the right side is the standard single frame. For this screenshot, I adjusted them both to have the same field of view, so it's 100% on the right and 63.4% on the left. With this view, there's a few things that might really stand out to you, and actually my wife when I randomly asked her. The first one is a different color. The high resolution mode increased the detail color accuracy of the image. This is because the photosites only actually captures one dedicated color, either red, green, or blue. Each pixel essentially borrows color data from the neighboring pixels to create this image. Because of this, the color from each pixel can be thought of as being 33 and a third percent accurate. When you're using the handheld high res mode, the camera shifts the sensor by one photosite unit, allowing it to capture data for each color, no more borrowing needed. Thus, the color in the high res mode is closer to 100% accurate. And each of the eight images captured during the handheld high res process are stacked on top of each other and combined to make that higher resolution image. And in doing this, your camera is internally replicating the effect that I talked about before, where we're stacking our images. And to prove this, let's look at this next photo. Here we see both images at 300%. Again, the handheld high res mode is on the left and the single regular exposure is on the right. Can you see the difference in the noise? To me, it should be obvious. And if it's not, pause the video right here and really look into it, especially in the shadows between the stars. There we can see that the noise has been greatly, greatly reduced. So that's an amazing little feature that's found on this Olympus camera is that it, it is doing noise reduction stacking inside the body. So I'm blown away by that. Now let's talk about the downside of using the handheld high res mode. Being patient out in the cold can be pretty challenging, especially when you really wanna see your image and you're waiting for it to create it for so long. I understand that 13 seconds can be a long time to wait to see your image. And when you're using this handheld high res mode, you have to multiply that wait time by about nine. So on average, the camera was taking about 116 seconds to compile a handheld high res image with a 13 second exposure. And this does make sense considering that it's taking all those images, aligning them, processing the image, and then showing it to you. So if you have the time and the patience, the handheld high res mode is awesome. But if you're wanting to run around and capture more different compositions and really have fun with it, you can skip the handheld mode and still get amazing results. But I'm gonna pressure everyone here. If you have the time, flip that camera over into handheld high res mode and you will see some incredible results from it. Now let's test out the handheld high resolution mode, which we already see is fantastic, versus the tripod high resolution mode. Now, because the tripod mode can't go over ISO 1600, I brought along with me this Mushu Move Tracker. 
This follows the stars as they move over the sky and freezes them relative to your camera. This allows you to take much longer exposures without getting those star trails that we talked about earlier. So these images I'm comparing were shot for one minute at 1600 ISO and I stopped down the lens to f2.8. Here we're looking at the handheld high-res mode on the left and the tripod high-res mode on the right. In the one-to-one -one view, the handheld res looks a little better, but let's make the field of view the same to really compare them. Now from this example, it does seem like the handheld high-res mode produces a cleaner, sharper image than the tripod high-res mode. This result, coupled with the fact that you can't go over 1600, makes me declare the handheld high-res mode the winner between the two. Now let's really talk about the last step to getting the very best image quality out of your Olympus camera, and that is adding a tracker. So what is tracking? How does it help? Well, like I described before, you mount your camera onto this little device and it follows the stars throughout the sky. This allows you to have an exposure up to several minutes at a time. And in doing that, we can still think about our exposure triangle. When you increase the shutter time, you have to decrease either your ISO or your aperture. And decreasing either of these has a really nice effect on your image. Decreasing that ISO will create a cleaner image with less noise and better dynamic range. And shutting down that aperture will help to reduce things like coma, chromatic aberration, vignetting. It'll flatten out your image. All kinds of good things come from adding a tracker to your nighttime workflow. Now you're seeing an example of a tracked and stacked image blended with a long exposure foreground on the left and a stacked image processed through sequitur on the right. You can tell right away the difference in detail, the difference in contrast and dynamic range. The tracker helped to bring out so much more information. Now the exposure values are relatively close to each other, but you can really see the major benefits from that low ISO and the closed down aperture. So again, to put this to the test, I went out away from light pollution a little bit further up to Loveland Pass in Colorado, where we can overlook Arapahoe Basin Ski Resort. On the picture on the left, we can see a much more defined dark edge around the frame. And on the photo on the right, everything's a lot cleaner. And we can also see that those stars have a nicer shape because I was able to stop down the aperture and reduce the coma, which makes those stars kind of have a goofy look to them. Now in this photo, I blew everything up to 300% and you can really see the benefits of the lower noise from the ISO 800 that I was shooting at. And you can see how crisp and defined those stars are and how they actually look smaller, which will create a better looking overall image, even zoomed out at a normal perspective. So that's just a little bit of what adding a tracker can do for you. But again, this applies to every camera. Let's get into the awesome features of the Olympus camera and see how we can combine a tracker with the brains of this Olympus to create the best possible image. Now, still using the tracker, we're gonna test out using the handheld high resolution mode versus just a regular tracked single 20 megapixel image. And this does get kind of interesting. Now the handheld high resolution mode does have a maximum shutter time of 60 seconds where the regular resolution mode can go for several minutes, really as long as your tracker will allow it based off of how accurately you polar align. So this makes me think that because we can shoot for so much more time with the regular mode, it might not actually be better than the handheld mode. Well, let's get into the images and you can see for yourself. For this comparison, the handheld high resolution mode is shot at 60 seconds at f1.8 and ISO 1600 and it's on the left side. And the regular mode is 240 seconds f2.8 ISO 800. So a lot longer exposure, more closed down aperture and a lower ISO. But if we look closely, even with a higher ISO and shorter exposure time, the handheld high res mode has significantly less noise. And we can attribute that to the fact that it is doing that stacking process that we talked about before. So the same downfalls still apply. It takes a really long time for your camera to process a 60 second high resolution mode. But if you have the time, the results are worth it and it'll save you time in post-production. Now, for the final battle royale, this is something that I was really interested to find out what the difference would be. 
in my normal workflow to get the very best images using a tracker like this one, I would shoot in the standard mode and take 10 to 20 images in a row at four or five minutes. So I'm capturing up to an hour or two worth of data and combining it into one image. And this has worked really, really well for me in the past. So is it possible that just doing one handheld high res mode will actually look better than doing all of that work of taking several long exposure images and stacking them? I'm going to let you choose the winner on this one. Look at this image that I'm showing you now. This is the closest race for me. In my mind, the tracked and stacked should look better. It's shot at a full stop lower ISO and two stops longer exposure with a more closed down aperture. It's also been combined with 10 of its friends to fight that noise. So is it possible the handheld high resolution mode can win? So my conclusion is that if you don't have the time or the patience to wait several minutes for one image, or if you wanna get several different compositions in a night, you can skip the handheld mode and still get fantastic results with your Olympus camera. But if you are going for the best image quality possible, first of all, the handheld high res mode without the tracker does produce much better results than just a single 20 megapixel exposure. And then if you do want to jump into creating breathtaking tracked and blended nightscape images, adding a tracker in the handheld high resolution mode is amazing. You can get really, really good results and prove everybody who says you can't get good results at night with a micro four thirds camera completely wrong. I have printed these images. I have sold these images. I promise you that little camera and the one that you're using yourself is very, very capable of creating these images. So I hope this has been helpful and you're able to get the most out of your camera. If you are looking for a little bit more training, if you wanna learn how to use something like a tracker, or if you want help figuring out what the best exposure for your camera and lens setup is, I am offering those one-on-one -on -one Zoom courses where over two hours, we can sit down on the computer, talk about whatever you want, astrophotography related. And this is really a nice way of, even though we are all sitting at home and not able to meet in person as freely, we can still progress and learn as much as we can really together about how to create the best pictures possible of the stars and of those starry landscapes. So if you are interested in that class, there's links down below. And I'm also offering discount codes. It's 10, 20, even 40% off of the $250. I don't want to limit this class to just people with a large budget. If you need to use that 40% code, please feel free to do so. I would be happy to meet with you and help you get the very most out of your camera. Okay, I think we are done for today. Uh, again, follow me on Instagram. I am really active on there. Please help out my tiny little channel to keep growing by hitting that thumbs up button and leaving a comment, either a question or something you enjoyed, or maybe something I missed. Maybe you know a trick about these Olympus cameras that I overlooked. So thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Alex McGregor. When the stars are out, I'll see you there.